Good morning and welcome everyone here to worship at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Rachel DeBoss Hagler and I am as always really delighted that you are here this morning. You have chosen to carve out time to worship as a community, to worship the God who we love and to be transformed in this space. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord, the one who loves us without exception. We gather to sing praises to God. Praise the Lord, the one who empowers us to grow. We gather to give thanks for all God has done in our lives. Praise the Lord, the one who frees us from our brokenness. We gather to worship our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please join me in the unison prayer. Holy One, we come before you. We come with hearts overwhelmed, sighs of struggle, and burdens on our shoulders. We come to you broken. In this time, in this place, we seek your strength and your mercy. We praise your name and seek assurance in your unending grace. Open our hearts to your spirit. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our hands to serve you in this world. May our lives reflect Christ, the one who walks with us and gives us life. In the name of Christ, we pray. 
Amen. As we move into a time for children's moment, if you have kids in your household, pause this worship and go and invite them into this moment so we can share this time together. If not, we all have something to learn from a really awesome children's story today. Today, our scripture comes from the book of Matthew. It's called a parable. It's a story that Jesus tells his disciples and all who are listening. And this parable, this story, is one of, one of my favorites. It's, I think, one of a lot of people's favorites. It is the story about the mustard seed. And so we learn that in this story, someone plants a seed. Now, I have here a seed. Look how tiny this is. It's smaller than my fingernail. It's smaller than nearly everything that I am wearing currently. It is so tiny, it fits in my hand, and I could fit probably 20 to 30 of these in my hand. This is one seed. And Jesus talks about how this tiny little seed, when planted and taken care of and fed and given water and even maybe sung to and cared for and loved on, this tiny, tiny seed becomes a big tree or a bush or a plant, but it becomes hundreds and hundreds times the size of this tiny little seed. If you look out your window or go into your yard, you will see trees and bushes and plants, and all of those started this small. All of the plant life outside starts as tiny as a mustard seed. The beautiful thing about this story for us is that we all, we all start out tiny and needing to be cared for and loved on. And the beautiful thing is no matter our age and even no matter how small, we are significant. We have the opportunity to grow and we have the opportunity to learn for we will not always stay as tiny as a mustard seed. And you will grow into a wonderful human being, into a wonderful friend, into a wonderful son, daughter, granddaughter, grandson. You are going to become as big and strong and beautiful as the trees, as the plants, as the flowers outside. Sometimes we all feel like we are this tiny. But this story that Jesus tells us reminds us that every part of who we are is significant. This tiny seed turns into something wonderful, but that something wonderful started this small. So remember that this week, that you are important, you are so significant, and you are going to continue to grow and learn and become the best version of yourself. You, yes, you are going to be amazing. And that's because God created us to be that way, to be strong and beautiful and to be part of this world. <sighs> Will you pray with me, please? Awesome God, thank you for reminding us that all of us are significant. We might start small, but we will grow into big, beautiful people, and we will be faithful to you. So we thank you this beautiful day. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Passing the peace of Christ is something that we are called to each and every Sunday. I had a wonderful opportunity this week meeting with a few people from church and something that they said stood out, that here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, passing the peace takes a really long time because everybody wants to say hello to everybody. 
And to me, that is a fantastic problem to have. And I think a lot of churches are really missing the connection, the human hug, the hello, the wave across the room. And so though we cannot do that in person this week or in the next future weeks, take time to say hello and welcome your neighbors, the strangers you pass on the street and all of creation. Pass the peace through a phone call, perhaps even this week to someone that you have not spoken to or someone even that you speak to every single week. Pass the peace of Christ. We crave that interaction. And so this week, today, may the peace of Christ be with you and with you always. For ministry moments this day, we have just a few things that I'd like to put on your calendar. So on August 9th, Sunday, August 9th, we will be blessing the backpacks. School is looking very different for this upcoming, um, specifically fall. And whether you're sending your kid into school in person, doing Zoom school online, or homeschooling your child, education is so very important. And we want to bless the backpacks and the students and the teachers and the parents. So on August 9th, if you are a student, elementary, junior, high school, college, or beyond college, bring your backpack and bring your educational elements and we will bless them for it is an important journey that you are on. Next week on August 2nd, we will be celebrating communion after service. At 1130, we have a community coffee hour that all are welcome to. And if you're a member of St. Paul's, you will have gotten the invite via email. And if you're not, but would like to join us, you are more than welcome. Drop a comment below and I'll be happy to connect you for our communion opportunity at 1130 after our 1015 worship service. And finally, next week, we will begin a six-week series on Methodism. We are a United Methodist Church, and I am very excited to dig into our roots and who we currently are and where we are going as a church. So not only will the sermon series be happening, but there will be a discipleship group opportunity. We will be doing a di virtual discipleship group on Mondays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., same content for both classes, but that way if, you're, if you work in the morning, you can do the evening class. If you don't like evenings, you can do the morning class, just giving people some options. And we'll dig deeper into the, the theme of the sermon that week. And so you'll see a slide right after this that has a little more information about times and dates. And also we will be announcing this next week again, and I hope you will join the discipleship group that are coming up for our six-week series on Methodism. The first scripture lesson comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, 
nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. next scripture lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world.
Will you pray with me, please? Gracious and holy God, thank you for bringing us together to hear your word, to absorb your word, and to be transformed by your word. May we receive it, may we hear it, and may we go out and utilize it into your kingdom. Bless us this day. Bless us always. Amen. Today is the third parable that we are hearing in our three-week series of Parables by Jesus. If you read this chapter, chapter 13 of Matthew, it is riddled with parables. We are not seeing all of the parables that are really rooted into this chapter. Jesus talks about how the kingdom of God is like this, this, that, and that. And the last three weeks, I really focused in on the three parables mm -hmm. that really talk about nature. So the first week we talked about the parable of the sower and how they put seeds on different types of ground and which seed took root. The next week we talked about weed and wheat and really about how those two things are intertwined and Jesus calls and tells us to let them both grow together until harvest. And today, is one of my favorite, I think I've said this every week, but I really love parables, <laughs> is one of my favorite parables is the parable of the mustard seed. And this is one that a lot of us are very familiar with. All three of these are very familiar parables. And this is one parable that I think has gotten a lot of attraction and has gotten a lot of attention. And it is one of the shortest parables that he tells. It is only just a few verses the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It's the smallest of seeds, but when it's grown, it's great shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. It's beautiful, and the imagery is so powerful. And today I'm wearing this big yellow flower because mustard, wild mustard flowers, are bright and beautiful and yellow and just stand out amongst the fields. But like I talked about in my children's story, the mustard starts as this tiny, tiny seed, much like all other plants. It starts as this, but then grows into the tree or the shrub or whatever plant life God has created it to be. Now, I've heard this sermon or this text, excuse me, preached on, you know, how we all start small, the beginning of a lot of things is tiny, but then they grow into big, beautiful endings, which of course is absolutely true. God is part of our entire process from the very inception of perhaps an idea to the creation of a ministry. At my previous church in Ojai, a beautiful representation of that is when someone said, I want to create a space where kids can come and shop for clothes for free. And it was just a seed. The idea was simply just this big. And it took a few years, but we ultimately got to the point where we could host this huge ministry. It was big, like a huge tree. And it started with this tiny idea and it blossomed into this wonderful, wonderful ministry. And that I know has happened here at St. Paul's and I'm learning so much about the ministries here that started as small as a seed and now are as big and beautiful as trees. And that's a really important lesson to learn from this. That's also the lesson that I've heard my entire life. And as I was doing my research this week, as I was reading up on this scripture, I really wanted to get a new perspective on this text. I like new perspectives because it helps keep the interesting stories still very interesting. And I think this relates to my life, to our lives a lot. And so I want to share it with you, this new perspective that I heard. I didn't know this. Maybe you know this. But a mustard plant is far closer to a weed than it is, if we're going to utilize last week's parable, than the wheat. It is, wild mustard, is this very invasive plant. It is so much like a weed 
that it just grows and goes. And wild mustard is also poisonous and toxic to animals and to a lot of different things. However, it grows and it grows and it takes over and it becomes this very invasive bush. But still, a lot like our, what our parable says, birds come and make home in it. Birds come and, you know, are able to live and be part of the be part of that ecosystem. It's a really different take for me to think of the mustard seed, not just growing as this big, beautiful tree, but growing as an invasive weed. That is a very hard shift that I personally wanted to take because what it's really saying about the kingdom of God is that God's kingdom grows as invasively as the wild mustard seed does. And that's really interesting because there are so many different types of mustard also, right? Some use for spices, some use medicinally, but this type that I'm talking about is one that is dangerous, one that grows without fright, one that just goes until it can go no more. It's hard to control. And once it takes root, it takes over the whole area. That type of mustard seed is really, if I think about it, if we stop and think about it, is how the kingdom of God works. The wild mustard seed, the kingdom of God, is incredibly hard to control. And once it takes root, it takes over the whole thing. Many of us think that the kingdom of God happens on our time. Many of us like the idea that the kingdom of God is welcomed into our life when we are ready. Many of us are just waiting for the kingdom of God to shoot up into this big, beautiful tree, and we're waiting for the seed to take sprout. However, thinking about the wild mustard seed and how invasive and how quickly it spreads and how quickly it takes root and how hard it is to control I think that is so much more like how the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is frustrating and it cannot be controlled and we cannot uproot it and it does not work on our time whatsoever. We cannot, will not, and should not ever try to maneuver ourselves so that it comes to us. We should and can and need to be moving in to that kingdom, into the kingdom that we cannot control because it is not our kingdom, it's God's kingdom. God has complete control and puts roots down wherever God wants, which is everywhere. The kingdom of God is not some far-fetched tree that is waiting to be grown, but it's the wild mustard seed that has taken root everywhere. It is invasive and bold and in your face the kingdom of God does not wait for us to catch up. It is going and we need to catch up to the kingdom of God. We need to not only pause and see that it is all around us, but we need to acknowledge and participate in it. A lot like the birds that make nests and homes in the mustard, we need to participate and live into the wonderful invasive, out of control, beautiful kingdom of God that has taken root everywhere. I found this quote from uh, John Dominic Crossan from the author of Historical Jesus, which affirms sort of this idea. And I want to read this with you, to you today. The point in other words, it's not just that the mustard plant starts as a proverbial small seed that grows into a shrub of three or four or even higher feet. It is that it, it tends to take over where it is not wanted. It tends to get out of control. And it tends to attract the birds within and cultivated areas where they are not particularly desired. And that, said Jesus, was what the kingdom is like. Not like the mighty cedar of Lebanon and not quite like the common weed like we talked about last week. 
It's more like a pungent shrub with dangerous takeover properties. Something you would want only in small and carefully controlled doses, but only if you could control it. We want the kingdom of God to be this small and to stay rooted in one spot and to grow as one tree and for us to work around that one area. It's easier and more maintainable for our human, rational brains to think of the kingdom of God as that one tree. However, wild mustard, this weed-like plant, starts that small and goes everywhere. It's not controllable. It is not something that we necessarily even have a say in, but it is something that we can participate in. The kingdom of God is right here, right now, everywhere. The kingdom of God is everything that we ask it to be, except we need to open our eyes and realize it's not that one tree growing. It's all of the trees. It is invasive in the best way. It cultivates roots and grows rapidly. It is out there saying, I am here and I am not going anywhere. So make up your mind, people, and join in the kingdom and be participants, be disciples. Bring Jesus into the world because I'm already here. Tell people that right now, here on earth, today, tomorrow, the next day, and for years to come, the kingdom is waiting. We do not have to wait for the tree to grow because the kingdom is waiting. We need to be the birds that seek it and find it and participate in it. We need to dwell within the kingdom. It's not some far off thought. The kingdom of God is here and it is rooted and it is everywhere. May we go into this week, this year, participating, acknowledging and witnessing the kingdom of God for it is good it is holy, and it is not controllable. So go be a participant. Go and be a disciple. Go into the kingdom of God in peace. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, you search our hearts to see all the good, all the challenges, and all the obstacles in our lives. We bow before you today, knowing that we have turned away from you, that we have forgotten our call to love with our whole hearts. Forgive us when we do not act as your faithful followers. Remind us we are part of your family, your kingdom. Help us to be your servants, to share your story with the world. Thank you for loving us. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. 
Beloved children of God, there is nothing, not one thing that separates us from the love of God. It is through the forgiveness of Jesus Christ that we receive every single day that we can live abundantly and live freely in this world. So go, be you. Go knowing that you are forgiven in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we move into a time of offering, thank you to everyone who continues to give what you can to your best ability during this time. It means a lot to our ministry here at St. Paul's, and it means a lot to all the organizations that you dedicate yourself to. So your generosity does not go unnoticed. Thank you. On the next slide, you will see that there are multiple ways to give through text, online, and through the mail. If there are other ways you'd like to give, please let us know and we'll be happy to accommodate from the bottom of our hearts here at St. Paul's. Thank you for your generous spirits. Will you please pray with me so we can bless these gifts before us? Gracious and holy God, thank you for the gifts that are given in your honor. It is good to know that our generous hearts and generous spirits are still flowing true out of us. So we bless these gifts. We pray that they bring glory to your kingdom, that they reflect our participation in all of the good works in this world. Bless them this day and thank you for our generous spirits, O oh, gracious God. It's in your mighty name we pray, amen. Will you please join me for the prayers of the people? Gracious and holy God, we are so humbled by your mighty presence, by your ability to love boundlessly, by your ability to forgive mercifully. We seek you in this moment. We bow before you in this moment as people who are weary, who are tired, who are worried. But we also come before you as people who are excited and invigorated and inspired by your very presence. We hold these two balanced ever so carefully in our lives. For you answer the prayers of weariness and you also celebrate the prayers of inspiration. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here today as a worshiping community, to feel your presence move even in this way through virtual worship. That is so special and something to be acknowledged and celebrated. We lift up St. Paul's as we move and continue to think about how we can be a community, how we continue to be in fellowship with one another and for all the churches who are learning to do the same. There is a lot going on that we do not know about. And so we lift up the burdens and the rejoicing of our neighbors, our friends, and our neighborhood. We pause for a moment and lift up the leadership of the world, those who hold the power to make change. We pray that they make change that is positive for multiple people, for the hundreds of thousands of people that need help, that need aid, and that need to be cared for in this world. We come before you, O oh gracious God, as the humble and faithful servants we are, seeking your presence, seeking your grace and your assurance this beautiful day. Thank you for teaching us how to pray as a body, 
Thank you for your son who taught us the prayer that is our foundation and keeps us grounded. And so now, will you please join me in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, as we depart from worship this day, I encourage you to go out into God's kingdom, witness it, acknowledge it, participate in it. We cannot wait one more second to sit back and wait for the kingdom to come to us because the kingdom is already here. So go be faithful disciples and go and experience God's kingdom this day and every day. I look forward to seeing you next week here at worship at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. May we go in peace. Amen.